Hi everyone, good morning. It is a weekday, but I'm gonna take most of today off because I worked the past two Saturdays. I was working for the National Centre for Writing on Saturday, which was really nice. I realised that I haven't done any work things with other people in uh, six months, I think, apart from the book launch that I did with Elle. And this was a Zoom call with about 40 people and everyone had their cameras on and I was delivering a talk for two and a half hours, but we were also having conversations within that time too. And um, yeah, I realized that I hadn't spoken to people in work contexts or in any context for quite a long time and it was quite nice. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna take most of today off. And I really like doing that actually, at the moment especially, taking some time off midweek if I've been working weekends because it means when I go for a walk, it's much quieter and that is very good. So I thought that I would vlog today. I'm also gonna make some hot cross buns throughout the day. They need to be proved three times, I think. So I'm gonna be making that in between reading, going for a walk uh, and doing some speed cleaning with you, if that's okay, holding myself accountable. I need to, uh, I need to do some hoovering. Very exciting, but infinitely more exciting for you because it'll be sped up. Anyway, I thought at the beginning of this vlog, I would show you what has arrived in the post this morning. I bought myself a couple of books I never do that, do I? I mean, what a treat for myself. Um, I decided to buy a couple of Catherine Lacey books because I was thinking, I love Pew so much, which I read last year. It was one of my favorite books of 2020. And she has a backlist and I have not gone into that at all. So let's see what that's about. So I bought a novel and also a collection of short stories by her. This was the novel that appealed to me the most, which is called The Answers. When was this published? 2000 and... 17th, so this one is very recent too. It says, out of options, Mary signs up to an audacious experiment masterminded by a troubled Hollywood actor. Mary is to play his emotional girlfriend, alongside a maternal girlfriend, an anger girlfriend, and of course, an intimacy team. Each woman has her debts and her difficulties, her past loves and her secrets. When the experiment changes, Mary and the girlfriends find themselves exposed to new perils, foremost among them, love. Then this is the short story collection. It really reminds me of something else. Topics of Conversation by Miranda Popke, perhaps. A bit of that and maybe a bit of Deborah Levy, I don't know. Anyway, it has French flaps. We know that we love a French flap. It says, certain states are hard to shake. Also, Catherine Lacey's characters find in these 12 tales of breakups, grief and strained family ties. In Please Take, a bereft wife gives away the shirts her husband has left behind. In Touching People, a flirtatious widow takes a honeymooning couple to see her husband's grave. In The Four Immeasurables and Twenty New Immeasurables, a young woman overwhelmed by her own feelings and the feelings of others tries to make sense of her relationship with the Buddhist monk. What I really loved about Pew was how atmospheric it was and also how effortless the writing was especially when it came to families and the subtle unspoken things hanging in the air when characters were interacting so I think I'm probably going to really enjoy her short stories because short stories or at least the kind of short stories that I love really rely on those tiny intricate details to build tension really quickly so these are two new books I was gonna say for my shelf, but actually no, they should go on the book trolley right here until I have hauled them. And then I also bought two, do we call them board games? Because they're not, they're card games. They're escape rooms. Mr. M and I have been playing a few escape rooms. He got uh, a group of three unlock escape rooms from our friends for his birthday last year. And we ended up playing them around Christmas. I don't know why it took us so long to get to them, but. We played them around Christmas and really liked them. You download an app that times how long it takes you to solve the clues and get out the room. It plays atmospheric um, sounds and stuff. It was really, really good. So I've bought us another three of those unlock. This one is unlock number, because I think they come in numbers. Hmm, it doesn't say, but this one is called Mythic Adventures. So there are three different types and they go from easy to hard and then I also bought another exit game this one is smaller and cheaper I think that this one costs about 20 pounds 25 pounds 
I think about 25 pounds. But what I really like about these is that once you have played them, you can then give them to a friend if you would like to. They are replayable. You're not destroying anything. And what frustrates me about this brand of escape room called the Exit Game is that you have to destroy the game as you play it. So recently we played this version of an Exit Game, which is called The Enchanted Forest. I got it for my birthday from my godmother and it was really, really fun. But let me show you inside you have to cut out bits to make different shapes to then use within the game itself. Whilst it's fun to cut out things and solve clues that way, obviously the reason that they have done this is because they don't want you to pass this on to your friends. Capitalism, they want everybody to buy a copy, don't share them. So that is a downside of this. It is much cheaper than the other games. I think this was about 11 pounds, but you do have to destroy it. Another downside of this one is that it was originally in German, I think. So this one, I don't know if it's the case for all of their games, was in rhyme and the way that it had been translated made it still rhyme, but it was really forced. A little tailoring is just the thing for the dress with the bow and a little bling. The bow is not quite long enough, so give things a turn. That's the stuff. I don't know. It just seems a bit cheesy. I kind of enjoyed the cheese at the same time though, so I'm not gonna complain about it too much. And plus, clearly enjoyed it because I bought another one in the series. The one that I bought this time is called The Sunken Treasure. It says, set sail on a treacherous quest for the legendary treasure of the Santa Maria. While investigating a mysterious shipwreck, something goes terribly wrong and you are trapped underwater. Can you solve the riddles of the wreck and recover the treasure before your time is up? This one also doesn't come with an app like the unlocked ones, so it's less atmospheric in this way. Still fun though. Anyway, I'm gonna crack on, do some speed cleaning. I'm also gonna finish listening to Passing by Nella Larson, which I'm loving, so I'll talk to you about that once I've finished it. Time lapse, please. flat is looking smarter and the dough is doing its first rise, its first prove. I will link the recipe that I'm using for hot cross buns in the description box down below. It's a Paul Hollywood one on BBC Food and I'm substituting a few things simply because the first time I made it I didn't have all the ingredients that he said that I needed but it worked out fine so I'm just doing the same thing again. Very minor things. I think it says that you need to use mixed peel but instead I'm using the zest of one orange and two lemons and then I think it calls for just sultanas or just raisins but I have some mixed dried fruit from when I made mince pie so I'm just using that and as I said last time it was fine but I finished reading Passing by Nella Larson. And I think I mentioned in a previous video that there are several different audiobook versions of this. And I chose the one narrated by Tessa Thompson because I'm a big Marvel fan. And it was a delight. It's a very short book. I think the audiobook is only three and a half hours. 
it felt longer, not because it dragged or anything like that, but just because I felt as though I came to know these characters so well, it felt like I spent so much more time with them than I actually did. I'm aware that as I'm filming this, it's near the end of the month, so I will be talking about this in a wrap up soon. But suffice to say, I actually enjoyed this much, much more than The Vanishing Half, which is by Britt Bennett and came out last year, and that is based on this book, Passing. Um, I think that's because The Vanishing Half is quite plot heavy, whereas this really isn't. Passing, unlike The Vanishing Half, is not about two sisters who've drifted apart, it's about two friends, two lighter skinned black women who are living in Harlem in the 1920s. They haven't seen each other for 10 years, then they run into each other at lunch and they catch up. One of them, Claire, has passed over. So she is passing for a white woman married to a white man who knows nothing about her past. And our protagonist, Irene, is married to a black man. And the two of these characters, Claire and Irene, they get tangled up in each other's lives. And there was also something about it that reminded me of Streetcar Named Desire by Tennessee Williams these two people who are inextricably connected but acting in extremely different ways. Both have the same fears but are responding to them again in extremely different ways. And there is that violence that is just constantly in the background of both stories. I thought Passing was incredible. And if you haven't read it yet, I really recommend picking it up. Um, I'm gonna go for something very different now. I think I'm going to pick up a crime book. I am going to go for The Lost by Claire McGowan. As you know, I know I am a broken record, but I have been looking for a book or a series of books that will match my love of the Frida Klein series by Nikki French, and I have yet to find that series. I did start reading the Vera series, and I liked it, but it's not patch on Frida. So I'm going to try this. This is about a forensic, a forensic psychologist who's called Paula Maguire, who's from a border town called, let me tell you, let me find it, Ballyterran, which is on the border between Northern Ireland and Ireland. She used to live there, then she moved to London, and now she's come back because some cold cases may be linked to some new disappearances, some teenage girls who have recently gone missing. And she has some secrets in her past from the 80s that I don't think the rest of her workforce know about. So that sounds really intriguing. Always here for crimes within crimes or secrets within crime books is probably a more apt thing to say. So I'm gonna start reading this and then I will need to add the fruit to the dough once that has proved I've left it rising for an hour um, and then I'll come back to you, tell you how I'm getting on. That's all. I am loving the Claire McGowan book. 
I think I'm already about a third of the way through and I've only just started reading it, but it's very easy to read. It's very engaging. Yes, there are some cliche things in or predictable things. You know, she fancies her boss and um, they're probably going to have an affair, but it's not as straightforward as that might seem. There are lots of things going on under the surface um, and I just really believe in her as a character. I'm finding her complex, which is wonderful. I think the reason that I wanted to read Crime today is also because we finished watching the latest series of Unforgotten. I think it's possibly my favourite crime drama. It's with Nicola Walker, who is a queen. And there were three seasons. I didn't realise that there was a fourth until Jean told me. And I was kind of glad that I didn't know that there was a new series because it comes out weekly. And this meant that we could watch all of it. And no spoilers, but the end of that season... I just, I found it very unnecessary. It was very good, but just unnecessary. And I wanted to read something that would help with that, ease that. And this is definitely doing the trick. I will report back in my wrap up with how the book ends up, because obviously with crime, it really does depend on what the outcome is, you know, how easy it was to guess. You want that really good balance of being able to guess some things and therefore feeling like you've done some of the work as the reader, but also being surprised, but not in the way that is infuriating. So you find out that someone who you've never been introduced to committed the crime. And how were you supposed to help solve that if you had never met them? I hate that. So it really does rely on the ending but so far I'm enjoying the writing very very much. I need to turn the dough now into hot cross buns, 12 hot cross buns and then I need to let it rise for another hour during which time I'll go for a walk, I'll take you with me and then I need to make the crosses to go on top and I never knew what those were until I made them the other week and they're really not exciting, it's just a paste using flour and water, yeah that's it and then they can go in the oven and then I can eat them. I would love to know, very important question, how you eat hot cross buns. I just like them with butter, but a side of cheese, which I think I've also mentioned in a video and someone commented saying, there is never anything wrong with a side of cheese and I wholeheartedly agree. A side of cheese, yes, but do you have jam? Do you have, I don't know, what else could you have? Marmite? I don't know. Tell me, how do you eat your hot cross buns? Leave a comment down below.
I am so thrilled with how those turned out. I haven't eaten them yet. I'm being good because they should cool for a bit. The glaze that you put over the top, I think it's supposed to be apricot jam, but I don't have that either. So I just mix some orange juice with sugar and that's what I did last time and it tasted really good. So I'm gonna let those cool for a little bit and then devour one or several. Um, I am about halfway through the Claire McGowan book now, The Lost, and still absolutely loving it. It's a really good pace for me. Lots of things are happening, but a lot of it is backstory, so uncovering secrets and not just things happening in the here and now. It's a good balance of character development and plot. Big fan right now. Fingers crossed that I'll still be a big fan by the time we get to the end. I'm gonna wrap this vlog up now, but I also wanted to mention, I know that I have spoken about Cunning Folk magazine. They are a beautiful magazine, fully illustrated, published short stories, poems, and things to do with witchcraft and folklore. I think that they're great. Their new issue, the water issue, is coming out next month, which you can pre-order now. And I have um, a new poem in there, a long poem called The Anatomy of the Sea, which I really enjoyed writing. So I'll link them in the description box down below if you happen to be interested. I would love to know what you're reading at the moment in a comment down below. Let me know if you have read any Claire McGowan. I have a feeling that Jean may be a fan, but maybe I've misremembered that. I don't know. I will see you next week. I hope that you have a good weekend. And yeah, I'll be back to talk to you about all of the books that I read in March. Sending lots of love to you all. Bye.